How this trader blew up on the yen. Hi, it's Charlie giving you Saturday's video. I hope you're well. So I'm going to be in this video today. I'm going to give, be giving you some general advice on what sort of goes on out there in the markets. And I've got a an example here. Um, I was having a chat uh, with somebody in the industry this week who told me about a money manager who actually sort of I say blew up, um, lost 50%. Um, he hit his 50% drawdown level. So 50% um, um, that he hit. So, I mean, that's a peak to trough. Um, so, but it's whatever, it's still a 50% loss that he incurred in this, just this move here in the dollar yen. I've got the, I've got the, uh, the chart of the daily chart of the dollar yen here and <clears throat> how did he do it how did he do it well there's two factors that are going on here we've got the factor of the trade itself and then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um some of these money managers their motivations okay their motivations and a lot of the time they're very very similar to that of newbie traders newbie traders okay so what do newbie traders want to do oh they want to make five percent a month don't they? they they think that coming into the markets um they're going to replace their salary so to speak and they or they can make this what they're told all the time consistent profits or consistent gains oh, if i can actually write there there we go <laughs> so they, they think they're going to be consistent well the market isn't consistent you don't make the same amount every month you make different amounts you have some months which are profitable some months which might be not profitable it varies from month to month anyway i'm i'm digressing let's go into the the nuts and bolts first of all the bottom line is that this trader shorted the market wherever it was let's just say it was in this zone as it broke out started shorting now i don't have an issue with someone shorting this market at that point i don't have an issue someone shorting it here or here or wherever i don't mind because if you've got a signal or whatever which for you is telling you that that market um, might actually come roll back over that's fine so there's nothing wrong with that by by itself the fact that the market just ended up having this huge run is is here nor there <clears throat> it's just a trade but have a stop loss behind it okay so the bot what happened here is the money manager doesn't use stop losses and took a trade the um and the, the market carried on going against him so he added more to it carried on going higher, added more to it, added more to it, added more to it. By the time we got into April, some point in this phase here, he hit that 50% um, stop loss, so to speak, on, on all of the client's uh, accounts. So his clients you know, will, will have lost vary, varying amounts. Um, I know one of the clients, and that's how I know about this. You know, someone I know lost 60,000 um, in this, which angers me. Um, of course, because I've, I, it really angers me when you hear about people who just trade like this, who put trades on and they use martingale net methods. So they use martingale, so adding in um, to losing trades. There's nothing wrong with adding into positions if you do it with a plan and an overall stop, stop loss cutout point. Not when you're doing it like this indiscriminately and then you just hit your, you know, his regulatory 50% drawdown. He would have just carried on and would have ended up blowing the whole lot. So I find it really quite um, appalling that this sort of thing goes on. It's one thing retail traders doing this because retail traders want to be right as much as, as possible. And so they do this sort of thing because a, a lot of the time, you are going to be right. If you used this method, then a lot of the time you will end up, you'll go underwater a lot, but the market will come back for you, few, and you get out at break even or even back into a profit. So it um, uh, it it sort of um, 
uh, what's the word? It complements you a little bit because you think, oh, this is fantastic. And you could go for months and months and months making money this way. But ultimately, if you're not using a hard stop, and so you don't have a plan around this, then um, ultimately at some point you're going to get what we call a black swan event, a black swan whereby a market doesn't do its normal retracements the market actually goes further than than you're used to it doing like what happened here in this run on the dollar yen and these black swan events do happen more frequently than you would actually realize so let's now move on to um, the motivations here so there's one thing that happening and we can I can sort of say why you're a professional money manager. You you know you should know better than this. But let's look at the motivations. So what do these money managers want? Bear in mind, I'm a money manager. I'm a professional money manager myself. But this is why it frustrates me when I hear about these people that do this. Um, his motivation is to make money. Okay, so that's his business is to is to trade other people's money and so therefore his business is obviously to make money for himself indirectly from making his clients money like those retail traders who just want to be right he has a vested interest to try and make money every month so he'll get paid on a performance fee basis okay so he'll get paid on a performance fee fee basis um on a month to month basis okay on a monthly basis performance fee so if he makes his clients money then he's making money he char they charge the performance fee and he gets his cut okay so he's motivated to make money every month now you might say well that's a good thing though charlie isn't it because then he's making the clients money yes but the problem is that his motivation comes at all costs almost so all costs he needs to make money for himself here so now the reality in trading and I'm going to give you some a bit of a dose of reality here is that you don't make money every month I mean, don't get wrong you can and we all have it we have you know periods where we just make we do make money every month for a long stretch but at some point we all have drawdowns where we have a losing month or a phase of losing months okay so and that's the same for anybody so his motivation is he needs to make money every month for his business so what is he going to do the easiest the easiest way to make money pretty much you know nine months out of ten or eleven out of twelve is to use martingale okay is to use martingale and please i implore you do not use this um it looks good on paper and lots of people do use it but unless you're using it with stop losses then at some point it will come home to bite you so for him the easy way to do it is the martingale get into a trade if the trade goes against you add some more here if it goes a bit further down add some more here add some more here and then all of a sudden if the, the trade the, the market only has to pop up a bit great take your profit here and you're out um, because he's averaged in and a lot of the time that will work because the market will do a bounce and bounce back for you out oh, you're out with a profit move on to the next trade so you can go for 11 months out of 12 and people will be thinking oh that's fine that's great but what is the point of trading 11 months out of 12 if you go and lose 80 percent in month 12 people be like oh uh, oh yeah well, well I, it won't happen to me and this is the thing people think it won't happen to them trust me i deal with lots of brokers i deal with asset managers it happens all around the world all the time you're not any different to anybody else so please don't think that you are because you're not <laughs> so what then happens is you got and this is what annoys me you know specifically with this money manager that his motivation coming back is is to, for him to make that money um, but he's doing it at all costs by doing what he's done at all costs so he ended up taking these huge risks in order to, to make money rather than cut the trade and take the loss which he doesn't want to do because it means then if he cuts the trade and takes the loss he doesn't get paid that month 
So there's this, um, the, the problem that arises, like I said, he's, he ends up becoming like a retail trader who desperately wants to make money every month. And that's what happens there. Now, this actually gets worse because this money manager has done it before. I've heard about this money manager a few years ago. Uh, one of my customers, fun enough, invested with him. And, um, and, and basically what happens is you get these, these money managers, they open up these funds, they, um, they do things like this, um, Martingale, whatever, and they'll get away with it and they'll, they'll have some stellar performance, they'll have some great track records um, all the time that it's working and then they'll go and crash periodically and lose their clients money. And then what they'll do is close that fund, reopen another one over here, rebrand it, whatever, um, change things around, attract new capital coming into this one with a new track record, supposed track record, and away they go and they and off they go and then another set of investors end up losing their money it's frustrating to me um to hear of this sort of thing it's you know i talk about this sort of thing with retail traders always shorting a market which is going up and they and they go long on a market that goes down we know that but that's retail traders who are you know uneducated but when you hear about you know professionals who do this because you know why are they doing this because they ultimately don't care about their clients all they care about is they've collected all of their performance fees over this period and all they and, and doesn't matter if they if they crash because they're good at marketing they'll move on find some new clients under a new brand or whatever it is they do and away they go again and it's like i said it is rather annoying so what's my advice? Well, my advice is if you do um, come along, come across a money manager and you see a track record where month on month they're making 2%, 8%, 6% and, and occasionally for good, wit, for good measure they might have a minus 0.8% month and that they're all you know really good months here and you see this month after month and they're making you know i don't know however much in a year um a hundred odd percent in a year you've got to be wary you have to be wary if it's too consistent their gains if they're if their gains are too consistent it's unlikely it's unlikely in the markets that you can be that consistent and if that's the case then it's likely that they're doing that type of trading technique where they are adding in to losing trades and doing that sort of thing because a lot of the time that is what will give them that consistency but just bear in mind at some point they will implode so what should you look for actually within a fund now all funds mine included will ha have um, purple patches where we just where I, I'll just make money month after month after month but generally speaking you will you should see within a fund uh, a fund which actually has plenty of you know zero percents um within the month within a year and it will have a couple of good really stellar months where you know um, maybe it's on the long side of a run like this you know where it'll have some really stellar months but plenty of flat months and plenty you know and a good few losing months as well but with a few interspersed really good months within that so where look it just looks a lot more realistic and so that would be my advice on that. And that tends to be how my, my fund is. And having a conversation with um, my source this week, and he said, Charlie, he said, you're different to a lot of the other funds. Why? Because I don't, I'm not motivated. I'm not motivated to make money for myself from what I do. So I guess I'm different to these other companies because I have all of my other incomes and assets that come in so although i i do it because i enjoy the satisfaction of making money for my investors but i don't do it at all costs it doesn't matter i don't i don't not interested in the monetary side of it that is not a motivation for me it's a it's a side effect of what i do but my motivation is about my investors not about me and how much money i can make and this is what he's saying he said you're different you're in a different position to a lot of these money managers out there and these firms who are trading like this so so yeah my advice is to look at the figures if you are in, investing but 
really take it with a pinch of salt if you're seeing these stellar returns like month after month because um, what I don't want to hear and this is where it angers me is when I hear of investors like I said I know this investor who's just lost 60,000 on this he can afford it he's you know, a multi-millionaire but it still angers me when I hear it because people fall for it they fall for the returns the promised returns there the bottom line is the, these people have a different motivation. They're not motivated to look after the clients. They are motivated to look after themselves. Anyway, there you go. A um, little bit of a different video uh, this week. And just a little bit of what can go on out there in the, the murky world at times of um, professional money management as well. Take care for now.